Welcome back, everybody, to episode three of my playthrough on The New Order, which is a uh, total conversion mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I actually uploaded this video yesterday, uh, but I've had to go back and re-record the entire thing, which I'm about to do now, uh, because for some reason, something was happening with my recording software where it was cutting off the last couple of seconds of every video clip. And so uh, a couple of you correctly pointed out that it seemed like I was stopping mid-sentence in the videos. I don't know why that happened. So I'm loading my save from the end of episode two and hoping I can largely recreate everything I did in that episode. Uh, so let's dive in and see what happens. It's July of, 18, of 1964. I'm used to playing in the Civil War, so I'm off by a century. Uh, we have just come through a period where... Uh, we've had three presidents already in 1964. Richard Nixon finally resigned because of the scandals surrounding his administration. Uh, and then Vice President John F. Kennedy took office, was on only to be assassinated shortly after. And so now we have kind of the caretaker president, McCormick. Uh, and that's actually really what he is, is we've got just this short uh, kind of national focus tree that we have to go through starting with the McCormick presidency then we'll get to passing of the torch and we're going to elect a new president in November so uh, I'm not going to interfere too much with the election or do any campaigning I'm going to kind of let it take its course and see what happens um, I have a feeling I know how it's going to go, but hey, we've got a revolution in Wales uh, starting out so uh, those are the kinds of things we're going to see while we have this Cold War with Germany and Japan uh, we're going to continue to see these revolutions happening in some of their dominions, some of their territories. We've got some free civilian factories, and I'm going to uh, continue to build up. You can see I've been building up infrastructure. I'm primarily going to focus on building infrastructure in places where I can uh, boost the production in certain territories, certain states. Uh, so things like oil, for example. Uh, we've also got iron ore, things like that. So we're going to just kind of right now focus on that and eventually I'm going to start focusing more on uh, military factories so we can start building up our military. We've got 165,000 available manpower. All right, let's see what happens. Got a decent amount of political power available at the moment. So uh, we're going to, uh, looks like we have the ability to decrease the black market arms trading that's happening inside of our own country, which seems to be a good idea. That's going to give us a bonus to stability and consumer goods factories. Our stability right now is at 68%. Uh, let's also sell South Africa guns. We completed the first of our national focus tree here. Uh, the caretaker president. All right, so that's really all I am right now is just kind of being a caretaker until we have an election here in November and we can select whoever the new president is going to be. All right, back to decisions. Shifting Irish politics toward democracy, that seems like a good idea. And the HMMLR, that's uh, kind of our underground political party that's over in England right now. And the work goes on. All right, so now we have a choice to who we want to support. Do we want to support LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, or Wallace Bennett? I think Wallace Bennett is the... Um, He's the conservative democracy. So I think we're going to go with LBJ. Let's see what happens. Yeah, these are all really quick national focuses. Healing a broken nation. This is going to give us a bonus to political power again. More stability. Stability is what we need right now, more than anything. Uh, we certainly don't have very much war support, but we're not at war, so that's not a huge issue at the moment. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to start exercises with my Army and Navy. Let's pause for a second. Because uh, I want to start building up experience in those uh, areas so I can reform those units and make them look the way I want them to. Um, I oppose Nixon on a lot of things, but his support for African Americans is not one of them. I agree. Um so let's go ahead and start exercises for all of our naval forces. That should very quickly build us up a nice amount of naval experience points that we can use. And I want to do the same for our army, which we don't have a, a huge army at the moment. There we go. 
So that should start building up our experience pretty quickly. In fact, I want to kind of see how, how fast that's going to happen. Army exercises, we're only going to get about a tenth of a point a day, so not real fast. But naval exercises, very quick. Uh, 1.27 daily. That's pretty good. So now we do have a choice to make, and that's between moving past Nixon or saving Nixon's legacy. Now, gains base war support, which I don't know that I need at the moment uh, to save Nixon's legacy. Uh, but then we can go the African Gamble, uh, which uh, gets the event Lightning Warfare. Uh, so I don't, uh, I don't know what that means, but it feels like that would be keeping a fight going. I don't know. Maybe we will go that way. All right, let's see what happens if we go saving Nixon's legacy. I really don't want to save Nixon's legacy, but if it means that we can get a toehold uh, down in South Africa, only about, and I, I, I threw my support behind LBJ, but I'm not really going to do anything to kind of push support in the election. I'll just kind of let that play out. Well, because the war's already over in South Africa, I guess that's why we just kind of bypassed all this stuff. So maybe we would have been better off to go this way. I don't know. Now we have a choice between he was a crook and a soul in torment, which apparently just depends on how we try to win over various parts of the country and I'm not real worried about that like I said I'm just going to kind of let the election play out uh, so I'll just choose he was a crook and we'll see what happens uh, we've got free military factories a new genre arises the spaghetti western now this is cool I grew up watching spaghetti westerns absolutely loved them they were called that because they were filmed in Italy uh, so I guess kind of a derogatory term so to speak um, calling sp uh, things we spaghetti westerns because they're made in Italy. But um, I loved them. You know, like the good, the bad, and the ugly for a few dollars more is the one that mentions here. Clint Eastwood stuff. I grew up watching those those on TV and just absolutely loved them. So that's kind of cool to see that uh, enter into things here. Uh, I'm looking at our free military factories, and I'm thinking about what we need. We've actually stockpiled a lot of infantry equipment, so we should probably slow down on those. We've actually got a nice stockpile of a lot of things. What we need more of our main battle tanks. Um, let's go to times five here. And uh, I think that's about it. We've got everything else that we need at the moment. So we'll just kind of start cranking out main battle tanks for now. All right, so we've completed He Was a Crook. We've completed Home by Christmas. Uh, we're now on to passing of the torch, and that's going to complete just before the election. But I would imagine we won't see a new national focus tree until after uh, the new president takes office, which would be January 20th. Uh, a little history about that. Up until, I think it was Franklin Roosevelt's inauguration in 1933, uh, inauguration day was always in March, and that actually switched over to uh, January 20th, starting, I think it was, um, might have been the 20th Amendment, it was one of the amendments to the Constitution, uh, switched that date to January 20th, and I believe when Roosevelt took office after the 1932 election was the first time that we went to that new date. Uh, we got a lot of available decisions, but I think most of them have to do with the election, which I've decided to stay out of. Um, we can continue to do this black market luxury trading thing, which is going to uh, remove the national spirit black market luxury trading light. All right, so let's take, I want to take a look at my national spirits that I have going on. Uh, so we've got Last Bastion of Liberty, which we kind of knew already. Um, I'm just looking to see what the effects are of some of these OFN Unity. Uh, so OFN is the Organization of Free Nations. That's basically us in South Africa and not much else. Uh, I think there might be a few others like Canada. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at that because I'm kind of curious about that. Organization of Free Nations, that's us, Canada. Uh, we've got Guyana down there after our little war that we had. Uh, and actually, 
South Africa is not a part of that since the war anyway. Australia is also a part of that. They're kind of our like last bastion, Australia, New Zealand, uh, last bastion against the Japanese there. So I imagine at some point there'll be war there. But there's very few uh, that are a part of that. What else do we have? Token civil rights legislation. So we've got stability 5% for that. I, we could do better at some point. Leasing of Sao Tome, uh, that's that island that we're taking right now, I think. Uh, the American despair. So this is a problem. War support minus 20%, stability minus 30%. Uh, misery and division grips our society once more, and the American dream is barely a memory. So at some point, it'd be nice to be able to remove that. So black market arms trading is substantial right now, and that's hurting my factory output. And black market luxury trading is light, so we actually need to keep reducing both of those. This one's going to, let's see. There are four levels, light, moderate, substantial, and severe. We're at substantial right now. This will replace substantial with moderate. So we're slowly working our way down. And that's going to help with my factory production level. So I just completed resuming battleship uh, technology. So now we're going to research the Wyoming class, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's a class in the game. You've probably heard me mention before, unless you're new to the channel, that my great-grandfather, uh, my father's father's father, uh, actually served uh, on the USS Wyoming. He was a seaman first class uh, in the late 1920s, early 1930s. Uh, so that's kind of cool to see the Wyoming class as part of the game. So one of the things I'm not real sure about, and I'm looking for all of you to give me some direction on this, uh, is I know that we now have nuclear uh, engines available for our naval vessels. What I'm not so sure about is, is it possible to put one of these into an existing uh, vessel. Because it says here that we could put a 1960 nuclear submarine reactor uh, into you know, one of these. So for example, this particular ship, the USS Triton. Um, and if I hit save, I mean, I guess in theory that should work, right? But I don't think that should automatically just happen like that, uh, especially on a diesel electric sub. Uh, so I don't know, is there something specific I have to do uh, in order to be able to replace those, or can I only do that uh, on new ships? Uh, so there's no available ship designs that are valid refit targets for all ships currently selected. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson won with 382 electoral votes, so he will be our new president. Uh, so, yeah, that's one of the things I'm just not real sure about is how I can go about making those changes. Uh, so if you have any input on that, please use the comment section below and let me know. Uh, is there a way to upgrade my existing vessels, or is this just something I can do with my new ones? All right, we completed all of the... Dixie sleeps again. Um, we completed all of the infrastructure that I was working on. So now I'm going to start queuing up a bunch of military factories. I need to start ramping up my ability for war in the event that this Cold War goes hot uh, at some point. Presidential election season is over. Hail to the chief, whomever it may be. We know who it is. It's Lyndon Johnson. But uh, John W. McCormick is still the president, at least until uh, we complete this um, and get to, well, until we get to November, or January 20th. Then I imagine we're going to see a brand new focus tree. It should be interesting to see what's available. So I'm going to go into where my carriers are, and uh, we're going to see if we can create a variant of the Kitty Hawk class that is, in fact, nuclear. So I'm not going to save that yet because I want to see what else we might be able to add here. Hangar space, deck armor. Um, yeah, let's go for more hangar space. Large hangar space. What's it going to add? I wonder how many ships this thing can hold now, or how many planes it can hold. Uh, what else can we do? Let's add some more medium hangar space, I guess. Over here we've got deck armor. We'll add some flight deck armor. That'll slow our speed down, but add some hit points and armor to it. Uh, and then here we can add a secondary battery. 127 millimeter dual purpose secondary battery. I like it. We're going to just deck this thing out. Let's add some anti-aircraft. Anti-air 4. 
So it's going to cost 31 of our naval experience that we've gained so far. But you can see how it's going to affect the stats overall. Uh, so that's all good. Let's go ahead and hit save. Actually, let's look at some of these other ones. Radar 3. I should, yeah, I should look and see. Anti-air missiles. Excellent. SAM battery 1980. We don't have that yet, do we? I guess we should be careful not to be adding things we don't actually have. Yeah, we should have 1960 SAM battery. Okay, very cool. So surface detection's up, sub detection's up, armor's up, manpower, 7,100 people on an aircraft carrier. Dang, save it. All right, so now, oh, so there's refit costs. So we can refit uh, the parent design. Okay. So is that how we go about then refitting the existing ones that are out there, I guess? Uh, and how do we go about... I'm trying to figure out where that is now, the one that we just created. Is it Improved Carrier Hall A1? Wait, let me take a look at this a little bit. Or is it this Kitty Hawk? Now, Kitty Hawk class is what we already had. It's just got a regular engine, though. Do we not have... There it is. This is the one we just created. Okay. So it's the Improved Carrier Hall A1. We're going to lose 497 days production on this Kitty Hawk that's actually almost done. So no, I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and start queuing up our first one of those. It's going to take a while to get built. It's going to be the USS Saratoga. That's cool. You can, you can change the names, but I like that. I'll go with that. Uh, I also want to look at the Ascension class, because I know we've got a bunch of Ascension class carriers out there already. Uh, so just updating them to nuclear reactors, I feel like, would be a nice uh, addition. And I want to see if it's that easy to just go in and update those. So let me look at one of my existing Ascension class carriers that I've got out there. Uh, USS Randolph right here. Is it possible to just go in then and give it a refit order? No sure. Uh, so if we select the Randolph there. Perfect. So we can we can go up to the new version of the Randolph. It'll take 91 days. See, that's not bad to switch it out and put a nuclear engine in it. So it, it, it really is that simple. I like that. That's very cool. Okay, problem solved. So here's inauguration day. Hail to the chief, breaking ground on the building of a great society. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah, we've got ourselves a nice big focus tree now. Uh, so it looks like we've got military upgrades that can be made, quite a few. Uh, these are all going to mostly just give me some bonuses on my military abilities. Uh, over here we've got, it uh, looks like our domestic policy, the Great Society. So this was historically, this is something that happened. This was um, Lyndon Johnson's uh, kind of his domestic, uh, you know, it's kind of his liberal policies for domestic uh, things, welfare, war on pov poverty, uh, health care for the nation, teach them well, uh, so education, civil rights, things like that. So um, probably by the end of this episode, I will post a question to our cabinet over on Patreon. That's everybody who is at the, uh, I believe, the first lieutenant rank on up. Um, who participates in those votes, and, I, and those votes are binding, so whatever the cabinet decides is the direction I'll go. Uh, so I guess my question will be, uh, number one, do we focus on military or domestic? Uh, and then I guess the next question is going to be, what do we focus on in the military or domestic? But I'll worry about where we're at at the end of this episode before I decide for sure on how we're going to do that question. So, uh, But for now, let's go ahead and choose the Johnson presidency. It's only 14 days. It won't take long. Uh, I'm continuing to look for all of my Ascension class carriers. 
Uh, so I, I don't know. And again, maybe there's a way to do this automatically uh, that I'm not aware of, and somebody can point that out to us. Um, but we've got the forest stall right here. I think I've already queued the forest stall up for upgrade. I know that's a forest stall class. That's why. That's a different class altogether. So I don't know if there's a way to mass upgrade all of our ships of a particular class or if I have to go in and find them individually like this. Here's another Ascension class, the Lexington. So we can go ahead and refit that one as well. So I noticed we haven't researched Special Forces yet. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Uh, I'm up to... Oh, that's naval research. I still only have 10 army experience. I really need to be getting army experience faster than I am at the moment. Uh, but we do have to start producing some anti-air equipment. So let's go ahead and do that. We need a lot of those, actually. 1,704. Which means we probably need to scale back a little bit on the tanks, which we, we need 1,000 main battle tanks still. Um... I still haven't scaled that back enough, apparently. There we go. Now we're starting to produce some anti-aircraft. Weaponry. Johnson presidency, inaugural speech. Um, so he's talking mostly about domestic policy. Mistakes of Nixon, the legacy of Kennedy. Looks like we can actually do both of these. So let's go ahead and do that. We need more chromium. We keep trading for chromium, and we keep needing more of it. But we're trading from the Union of South Africa, so that's good. Uh, need any air equipment. We're working on it. We're working on it, guys. Let's look at decisions. We're still fighting the black market arms trading. We're just about done with all of that. Uh, let's continue to sell South Africa guns and improve relations with the HMMLR. Looking in production now, we can actually see the carriers that are queued up to receive upgrades. Uh, and in order to do that, though, we're going to have to free up some dockyards. Um, no, actually, it looks like we do have docks and dockyards that are being used for repairs, uh, but none, it appears, currently used for the upgrades. Uh, we have a lot of repairs and refit happening because we were doing all those exercises with the Navy. Uh, so let's go ahead and free up a few of the ones that are working on our Kitty Hawk class. So we can start upgrading some of these ascensions a little bit. There we go. Uh, so I don't know how long those are going to take, a couple of months, I guess, for each one. So it'll take some time to make that all happen, and that's fine. Uh, new technology ready to research because we've completed the Wyoming class. Uh, we're still behind. That's a 1950 technology. Uh, so let's get up to Florida class, which will be our first one that actually has a built-in nuclear reactor already. And we'll still be able to make upgrades to that if we want, but that's a, a pretty substantial battleship right there. All right, so I have gone as far as forwards together, and you can see we've now got stability up to 80%, uh, percent, which is fantastic from where it was. War support's actually at 25%. We've actually significantly added to our manpower, so I'm going to start crank, cranking up the uh, production of military, uh, start building the military up some, uh, and we're actually, now that we've gotten that far, I'm going to switch over to military policy outlook uh, and do the first couple of things there. And we'll get to a couple places where we've got some decisions to make. And that's probably where I'll wrap this episode up uh, so that we can start uh, posing those questions to the cabinet and see what direction we want to go. But let's take a look at recruitment and deployment. Uh, we still only have 13 in Army experience. So I don't think it really allows for much as far as uh, editing our divisions. See, we've got combat width of 12 in our infantry divisions. Ideally, I'd, I'd like to, those to be at 20. Uh, so we really can't add enough to get them to 20, at least at the moment. So maybe we could reduce them and make them 10. Um, I don't know. Let me look at our armored divisions, which is the other kind of main thing we're doing. See, those are at 16. I could get them to 20 a little easier. Um, let's add some motorized infantry to those. We can see what all that does. That adds to their soft attack, their hard attack, fuel capacity, manpower. 
So we're going to add a little bit of motorized infantry to our armored divisions, just to give them a little bit of versatility. And how about an APC, armor personnel carrier? Actually, that's what we already had, so maybe that's the way we'll go instead. Um, that gets us to 20 in the combat width. There we go. But that's going to mean we're going to need to reinforce those, which is going to take some time. So rather than adding new ones to the queue, we'll just reinforce what we already have. Uh, we'll add an additional infantry division to the queue, and eventually we're going to upgrade those as well. All right, we just got some ominous music playing. I feel like this is a big deal. Uh, research finished on the Lockheed AC-130E Spectre, which is cool. Uh, the Indonesian War. So this is going to be our Vietnam, I guess, is how we could put this. Uh, we prefer independence with poverty to servitude with plenty. Uh, so the Pacific is like free Indonesia declared war on Indonesia. So uh, Vietnam, which really kind of escalated under Lyndon Johnson. I shouldn't say kind of. It really did. Um you know, it became kind of this proxy war where you had the communist powers supporting North Vietnam, uh, democracy supporting South Vietnam, really not any different than what was happening in Korea with North Korea and South Korea. Uh, same exact deal. So I guess instead for us, it's Indonesia. Uh, and this is our opportunity to try and kind of slow the influence of Japan in Southeast Asia. Indonesia, one of the largest, uh, most populous, I shouldn't say largest, one of the most populous nations on earth. Uh, so this is a big, big deal, and this is our opportunity to uh, have a proxy war with Japan without, without actually fighting. So um, that's kind of where we're at on that. And now we've actually got a new national focus that has opened up. So let's go ahead, uh, Burning Jungle, and we'll select that, and we'll kind of see where we go from here. We've got decisions to be made. Nothing really to do with this war though at least not yet all right so here's where we can really start impacting things we've got 413 political power which is a huge deal uh, the war of words would give us five percent to our base war support which right now is only 26 percent gives us 40 political power and it gives also free indonesia a five percent bonus to base war support uh i don't think these are those two are not mutually exclusive, but once we get down here, they do become mutually exclusive, it appears. I don't know. Let's take a look and see what happens. Uh, now we have a bunch of decisions as well. So let's take a look at these, because these are kind of big deals here. The front line, send more military advisors. Uh, advisor level one, to advisor level two. This is what happened with Vietnam. It started with us sending advisors and slowly starting to send a few troops here and there, and it just kept kind of ramping up. That's going to allow an additional volunteer force division. Uh, so let's definitely do that. Preparing our navies uh, gains Operation Starlight, which grants invasion preparation time minus 20%, supply consumption 15 um, That'll lower domestic support for the war. I don't think we'll do that yet. Same here. Jungle training operations. Uh, I don't think we'll do any of that for now. Let's send guns to free Indonesia, though. Send more military advisors is what we're currently doing. I think that's all we're going to do for now. Let's finish this decreased black market arms trading. I think we're just about done with that. Indonesia calls. Uh, we will always stand up to tyranny. Yes. Man, it doesn't look like it's going well for free Indonesia so far. I want to look and see what the numbers look like in this war. Right now it's pretty even. But uh, Indonesia's lost half as many. And they've definitely got more troops. So it's not going particularly well for free Indonesians right now. They do still hold quite a bit of territory over here, though. And I would imagine, just as I am trying to support free Indonesia, that the Japanese are probably doing the same in Indonesia. Um, yeah, so now that we've done that, we can't select this one. 
but we can select forward base Darwin. That's going to kind of build up the defenses on the northern coast of Australia, which I guess is a, an important thing to do. United we stand. It'll raise domestic support for the war even further. So let's go ahead and do that. How are we on decisions? We're almost done with send more military advisors. Okay. Can we send even more? Yes, we can for another 100. How many can we currently send to them? Send volunteers. We can actually send three at the moment. All right, so let's start sending some divisions to help out. We're going to have to create a separate force, and I'm thinking that armored divisions are the way to go. So let's go ahead and create an army with three armored divisions in it that we can send over there. Leonard Chapman will be in command. And we'll just find a couple more armored divisions. There we go. Alright, so that's who we're going to send. So back to Indonesia. I don't know where they're going to put them, but... Let's send our first three divisions. Okay. All right, if we do expand the fleet, we can get increased dockyard output. That's a big deal. That, that would actually be really helpful. Uh, our volunteer forces are expected to arrive on June 2nd, so they're about to arrive. There they are. So we're going to get our first troops into combat here, not in South Africa. Here we go. Uh, let's see if we can find. They're over here uh, where things are quite desperate at the moment. So we may be there just in time to turn the tide. Uh, let's go ahead and throw them on the front lines. Looks like there must be mountains here or something, so we can't go that way. Um, offensive line. Let's push out to... Let's just try right here for now. Eh, not like that. Honestly, I'm just going to manually control these guys for now. It's only three divisions. Oh, man. Organization not great. I probably should have waited a little while before I started attacking with them. But it looks like we're going to do okay. There's only one division defending there. But once we arrive uh, in this location, we're definitely going to give them a chance to... Uh, to kind of build that organization back up, because it obviously had not. There we go. There we go. Let's let that kind of build all the way back up. We're also not... We're only at 51% fighting strength. So we need to produce a bunch of things uh, to get them back up. So let me work on that uh, for a little while. But I think I'm going to wrap it up right there. I think that's a good spot. We've got a lot going on. Uh, and things are about to get a lot more interesting because we're now in this war in Southeast Asia. So my question to the cabinet is this. Uh, do we focus on military policy more in our national focus tree? Or should we focus more on domestic policy right now? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Head over to... Uh, patreon to do that you can vote and we will follow whatever you say um if if you decide on domestic at least for the next episode that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on the domestic policy if you say military we'll start filling out all of that military in the next one uh, and then there's also a place where you can uh, use a comment uh, below uh, that and let me know specifically if you have input about that uh, i think i'll also make a third option to say um do a mix of the two and kind of go back and forth to give us a little more flexibility. So let me know your thoughts about that. If you're not a patron, that's totally okay. I'm not, I know not everybody's in a position to do that, but every time you hit that like button, every time you leave a comment, you are helping the channel, and I am grateful for that. Uh, like many people, I have no job right now because my job requires me to travel and be in schools. None of that is available right now. So this is my only source of income uh, to help support my family. So I'm grateful. Thank you. We'll see you again soon.